Nightcrawler is passionate. Nightcrawler is uh, loving, caring. Nightcrawler is one of the most uh, exciting and uh, innovative and interesting characters I've ever worked with. Nightcrawler rocks. My first introduction to Nightcrawler came when I was in high school. The thing about Nightcrawler for me at the time is that he reminded me so much of uh, the things that I've gone through or the, the life that you feel uh, when you're sort of a persecuted teenager. I've always enjoyed him and I've always wanted to, to, to work with him and do things with him and it's just like one of those childhood fantasies that, you know, now that I'm much older I get the chance to actually do it. I went to college for commercial illustration, studied drawing for a number of years, got out and worked as an illustrator, got into animation and got to the point in animation where I felt like I would, had gone about as far as I could go. Was looking to do something different, try something a little more creative where I was actually kind of the driving force behind the creativity as opposed to being somebody else's hands. And I put together a submission package uh, for one of the characters for Marvel and wound up drawing Electra f to start off with. And I had made a pitch that was an entire concept. It was writing and drawing a character called War Machine. People liked the way that the stories were written, they liked the action and the, the humor that was in it, and the writing just began to blossom from there to the point where I don't draw anymore. I actually write almost exclusively. The editors at Marvel, who were um, running the X-Men, were looking for a new writer to take over from the guy who had been writing it for a while and was planning on leaving the book, and they took a chance on me. It's one of those right time, right place, lucky break kind of things, and, and I'll be forever grateful because it's been a blast. He was a very happy-go-lucky kind of character. He, he has evolved quite a bit over the years. As you saw in the movie, there was always that spiritual side of him. He was always very strongly devout and, and a very strong believer in God. And as the series progressed, eventually they turned him into a, uh, a studying priest. That was the evolution of his character. That was the direction that he'd gone. He had become more moody and more um, downbeat. And I had, when I took over the book, I said, I want to get him out of that. I want to get him back to where he used to be, more happy-go-lucky, more um, sweet and kind and funny and, and uh, more of a glasses-half-full kind of guy. The Nightcrawler prequel came out because the Marvel had decided that they wanted to take some of the major characters that were going to appear in the X2 movie, and they wanted to write individual stories about them, about what happened to them just before the movie starts, just before the credits begin to roll. The nice thing about the prequel, though, was that I was able to take a lot of the original concepts and just kind of run with them. I didn't have to be uh, anchored in by what had happened in the comic book. I didn't have to follow any original existing continuity. I could just sort of take what I wanted and crafted a story of what happened before and how he got to that point where he was actually going to go in and assassinate the President of the United States. I start the story off with him already involved in the circus. He's, about, he's the same age that he is in the movie. He was a foundling uh, as a child. He, he doesn't know who his parents are. And a woman that belongs to the circus, Margali Zardos, and her daughter, Amanda, uh, find this baby uh, Nightcrawler and raise it as their own. As, uh, as time goes on, he becomes a mem full member of the circus. He uh, has a flair for the dramatic. He winds up becoming one of the star performers and they start to build the show around him. He's not entirely happy with the way things are going because he's fallen in love with Amanda and she's in love with somebody else. He winds up uh, being approached by the guys from Weapon X uh, by Stryker and they uh, cloud Kurt's mind so that he believes that he's he's finally gotten Amanda to fall in love with him and then they take him off and keep him in this little fantasy world to keep him under control. As Stryker continues to try to turn him into a killer, he continues to resist and refuses to, to get involved uh, until finally they reveal to him that everything that he's experienced is a dream and that they don't, they don't need him to be a willing participant anymore. They found a way to use the chemicals that Mutant Dex creates to force him to do what they want to do and that crushes his spirit uh, just as they inject the uh, chemical into his neck and send him off to do his job. When I, when I write a script, you write it in full script form. The uh, page descriptions, the panel descriptions, exactly what's going on in each panel and all of the dialogue so that the artist has something to work with. And then when you send it off, you hope that they'll either do what you ask or if you get lucky, they'll bring something even more to it. And Carl Kerschel, the guy who did the artwork on this particular issue, 
every page that I got back was just a work of art. I was so astounded with the sensitivity and the creativity and the compositions and the, and the dynamics of the artwork every time I got some of it back. Just amazing, really beautiful stuff. There's a shot where he lands on a tombstone in front of Amanda in the middle of the show. That's, that's a, a, an amazing shot. One silent page where Amanda and Margali have, have uh, realize that Kurt is gone and he's probably not coming back and they have no idea what happened to him. And I mean, he may just be dead in a ditch someplace for all they know. And it's, uh, I had no words on it. It's just an amazingly beautiful, sensitive page and there's just no reason to put any dialogue over the top of it. The one that uh, I remember the most is Stryker is trying to determine what kind of powers Nightcrawler has. He's, he knows that he can teleport, he knows that he's very agile and that he speaks various different languages. And he says, is there anything else that you can do? And there's a, a, a little sequence where Nightcrawler thinks about it for a second and then he looks and he says, if you rub my stomach, my leg wiggles. And he goes, and Stryker gets mad and turns around and walks away and he goes, no, really, try it. And uh, that was one of my favorites in the, in the uh, book. I loved it and the way Carl drew it was so funny. He is at his core, in a lot of ways, the essence of what the X-Men is supposed to be. They are ostracized, put upon, they're uh, people that are not looked upon kindly in the world. And so they speak to that sense of alienation that we all have in a lot of ways. Nightcrawler approaches that from, with a positive viewpoint. Uh, he does not look uh, with hatred or with uh, anger uh, at the people who mistreat him or treat him badly. He, uh, he's, he's understanding of their reactions and he tries to put as positive a spin on it as he possibly can at all times. Uh, Wolverine is the cool character that everybody really gets into because they all want to have six inch claws sometimes and, and run around killing people willy nilly, but Nightcrawler to me is really what is the heart of what the X-Men is all about. Well, as long as there will be X-Men, there will be Nightcrawler. When people read this, I guess my biggest expectation or my biggest hope is I want them to have a good time. I want them to have read it and say, that was pretty cool, you know, to mem remember it and, and uh, for it to have some kind of a special place in their hearts. Wizard Magazine asked me not too long ago, what secret about Nightcrawler is it that I know that no one else knows? And you've seen that Nightcrawler has, he's only got three fingers and, two, or two fingers and one thumb on each hand, and the same with his feet, and I said, well, he also has two other things. <laughs> and that was, I don't know if you guys can use that, but that's my, that was my answer to them. That's the one secret that I know about Nightcrawler that nobody else knows. Now why I know that, I'm not really sure I want to talk about. But, um, that, I'm sorry, that's the first thing that came to mind. <laughs>